So this is an article courtesy of um, RA speaking about Jack Master, um, which kind of touches upon some of the things I touched upon, upon him being a difficulty in mourning his death of some people in the industry. Um, so let's kind of read this particular one. Um, so let's read this here, courtesy of RA. I'll put the link in of, of the article itself in the description too, so you can check out yourself. But I think this is kind of important to read considering what's been going on here. So let's read this on the screen. So it says as follows. Um, shock ran through the dance music world this weekend as news broke that Jack Master had died age 38. Squaring his death with an image of a man who, in his pomp, felt like the most lively performer and plausibly the most alive person on the planet is raw. He was a huge talent who had a major impact on careers, thousands of artists, as well as the listening habits of countless more fans. But talking about Jack Master necessitates necessitates um, a complicated and for those who counted him as a friend and associate traumatic negotiation between competing memories. There are two Jack Masters in the public eye. We owe it to him and ourselves to be real about that. There is Jack Master, aka Jack Reville, one of the most magnetic DJs and on the money tastemakers that the music um the UK has ever produced. Loyal to a fault, who went out of his way to offer a leg up to seemingly everyone he met. People adore Jack. And by the way, that's a point that needs to be emphasized. There is a real lack of that nowadays. He was one of the few that did it and did it with enthusiasm and did it without expecting anything back. Legitimately put a lot of people on, catchy people, like really was about that life. So RIP to him. There's also a superstar DJ, Jack Master, whose golden boy status evaporated after a high profile incident in the summer of 2018, where he admitted to sexually inappropriate behavior while blacked out on GHB. Following that, a significant number of people backed away. Again, those people are the worst, to be honest. To nullify the highs and to minimize the lows, smoothing the extremities of a rollercoaster life into a palatable pace now that he's gone, it's not true to actual Jack Ravel. As a generation of musicians and club goers grow old, to lose a masthead who was responsible for soundtracking those golden years, forging a huge volume of connections and opportunities as he went on, is wrenchingly sad. Here is a clear reason why the bulk of of eulogizing posts and assorted media both selfies tour highlights and afters clips pains to the or pains to the incredible ear conclude around the same period how to sympathetically get your arms around somebody whose memory harbors both joy and pain what could he have done differently what could we have done differently Understandably, most don't have the energy to put themselves through the ringer right now. The paralysis of a well, just get to a point, brother. Across the weekend, I heard from thousands of Reveal's friends, fellow musicians, and well wishers across the globe, as well as those who did not know him, whose primary obsession with him was his bad behavior. In private conversations, no matter the stance or proximity, a similar takeaway emerged. The heaviness was being intensified by a lack of adequate language to express grief, effect on Reveal's life, so there's a step forward in navigating this together. If you were a if you were to participate if you were a participant in a club scene roughly in 2016 to 2018, Jack Master was an icon, sporting a highly time and place quiff and a sharp wit. He was a pure box office. Through numbers, the label he co-founded, Rivo had a direct and some of the he had a direct role in some of the most country's best music from Sophie, Glass Swords, Bax, and beyond. To watch Revolve tear through a quadruple reload of Rusty's then unreleased Ultra Fizz in 2011 seemed, without embellishment of rose tinted specs, to be the apex of DJing as entertainment. And also remember, Jack Master came about at a time where he was, I think, he was about during the peak or the, the, the peak era of Boiler Room when it first started, like, you know, when Boiler Room was like webcam. That's when he was about, you know what I mean? Pure webcam time. So you have to give this guy a lot of credit for that shit. You have to give him guy a lot of credit for that shit. Um, across the weekend, I heard from thousands of the, I said already, um, the moment in the 2000s folded into the early 10s is valorized for good reason. Nights out were exceptional and the links between the city and the scene ironclad and people freely trade entire catalogs of worth of tunes led to dizzy and cross pollination at the production of the DJ level through distributions like deals at rubber dub touring and simply joining the dots between the generations on the rise reveal was um was a connection know the heart of it as a regular in the club circuit up and down the country at the time his career took off reveal's reputation was staked on his rep approachability and he stayed faithful to that here was here was an increasingly famous person who could interface with passion 
who could interface with possessing insane patients for having their ear chewed off, responding to fan DMs, or passionately debating Laurie D and Sheila E on socials and forums. It didn't hurt that he was charismatic, illegitimately very funny, and at a time, a many big lead DJs telegraphed self-seriousness. Reveal boasted Glasgow status as a vital conduit of the electronic culture, stumping out the numbers of Rubber Dub and Sub Club and Optimo and Lucky Me. He jumped out of the plane ahead of the going back to back with Armin van Helden for Boiler Room. To his core, Reveal advocacy for music and people was volum voluminous. It's not difficult to see where he became the most popular DJ in the world. Um, there's an advisor annual DJ poll stopped ahead of 2017 edition. It left Jack Master Frozen at the time at number two. Well, I didn't know that. Okay, it was number two at that time. There'll be many out there, including those who came club in 2018 who might be perplexed or even licensed the weekend at pouring on fondness. The incident which Mard, yeah, let's be good. Let's, let's get to the bit. The incident that Mard, Jack Master's name, remains inexcusable. Ravel said as much at the time. It brought into cold light the extent to which his consumption habits were affecting him. The sore note, the sour note, sorry, is that many cheered on the indulgence as a, as an extension of his aura, sashaying through the city after city and festival after festival, like a like a gadabout hovering up pints and extracurriculars. I don't think that's true. No one, no one was making excuses for his behavior. Everyone said it was terrible. People just thought their reaction to like completely excommunicated from the scene forever was a bit extreme. That was it, especially when the people involved had forgiven him and they were okay with it. Like the police were were meant to be involved. The people involved, the people that were affected, the actual quote unquote victim said, no, we're fine. We forgive the guy. The festival forgave him. They put out statements. Everybody seemed to be okay with the situation. He went, I think, to rehab, disappeared for like a year and still everything didn't go back to normal for him career wise. That seems a bit out of order to me misdirection around what took especially because there was no other i don't know maybe it's, i would have felt different if he had like a catalog of those offenses okay then get the fuck out of here you're, you're weirdo but it seemed like that was a, it seemed like on paper again talking from the outside in that was a one-off situation if that's the case then like you know extend some grace to the guy misdirection around what took place at love saves the day made the situation worse without really um uh really to get into specifics rumors swirled for an entire week that repurposed Revel's behavior as little more than another cheeky notch in the belt of a sesh king. It was a callow way it, it was a callow way to deal with sexual impropriety. It's hard to know the outcome of a Frank Mia Corpa being delivered from the start. But for those with a professional duty to the care to leave the situation simmering in the comments was a dismal approach to handing to handling public welfare. By the time full details emerged, the fiasco had become so inflammatory that no one was in a charitable mood. Reveal built his career different lane, but his public image was now so was now no great repair was saw no great repair that is kind of true though i do remember that is kind of true when it did come out the the dls weren't there and maybe people were going out of their way to make it sound like it was a cheeky thing and then when the deal did come out it sounded kind of serious and then people kind of started to reverse course so, ugh, but i don't know man i still think being excommunicated from the scene for that was a bit extreme and especially when you think of people in the scene nowadays who are legitimate r worders who are still getting booked and stuff like come on man the act took place in a parallel with two conversations around equalizing in e e equalizing initiatives and safety practices which began changing dance culture for the better yeah that's what i said before i think the timing of his offense was just really bad he did it at the time when people were kind of being fed up with that kind of like image of a dj that kind of you know machismo alpha cisgendered whatever dj guy right like the jamie joneses the seth chocolates all these kind of people people had kind of grown fed up with those guys and they wanted a different thing on the on the lineup they wanted more girls they wanted more diversity they wanted younger people they wanted you know less sex pest so i think unfortunately for him that event just was bad timing you know unfortunately there was a kind of a changing of the guard changing of uh sensibilities and he obviously paid the price for it that was as the victim statement noted the entire point of reveal fronting up publicly this wasn't smoke um area chit chat reveal addressed it apologized sought to get clean and paid professional price he attempted to go down the path of rehabilitation that many in the industry would not tread to humble to mumble obliquely now about the intermission between reveal being um legend in the scene and someone many could turn um, out from is disingenuous grappling with all this is uncomfortable yet it doesn't compare to the distress of those affected 
nor the women who may have felt unsafe in Revel's company thereafter, or anyone who subsequently questioned the, the, uh, the allegiances and blurred morality of men they previously trusted. The truth is that many of the promoters, artists and writers and industry professionals posting tributes over the past 48 hours either deplatformed or disengaged from Revel after 2018. Maybe that's you and it'll be a facile to pretend it wasn't RA2. Exactly. So for R, it's even worse for RA because RA went out of their way to kind of excommunicate the guy and they are the masters at picking and choosing. They are the kings and queens of picking and choosing who deserves forgiveness, who deserves to be chastised, who deserves to be ignored. It's really fucking unfair and fucking shit. I'm not going to lie, which is why I kind of like the DJ poll and why I wanted to come back. The DJ poll was the most democratic bit of media in dance music because the fans who actually go to events could vote for the DJs that they liked and that they could kind of, you know, give, give them the reward of being voted in top DJ. And sometimes, most of the time anyway, it was sometimes a person that wasn't maybe the darling of RA or wasn't really loved in the industry that was getting shone of a light on. And then in the comments, you'd find people kind of commenting and saying who they also liked in the scene and they were kind of bigging up. But, you know, they got, they got rid of it because I think partly... RA got rid of the DJ poll because of pressure from labels and agencies and festivals and shit. I think so personally, because obviously, you know, the top people are the top people and some of their names, they couldn't get them on the list. So I think a lot of the labels and stuff probably were getting affected. I'm sure some of the DJs themselves were probably citing mental health. You know, people are always crying about mental health and shit. So I'm sure some DJs that weren't getting on the poll were crying about that. So they took it down. But I think that DJ poll was honestly one of the best ways for fans, actual real fans to um, you know, positively affect the career trajectory of their favorite DJ by voting for them and getting them on there. Sometimes even if you finish like dead last or 50, quote unquote, it still was a good look because, you know, you were like a local hero doing your thing. So yeah, what can you do? Let's continue. I've uh, penned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big up a collar. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I, I, I've got to, I've got to change it. Apologies, NJ Ranger. I'm going to, when I finish this, I'll change it. I, I promise I'll, I'll, I'll unban you. I did it by accident. My fat fingers, unfortunately, did it i really do apologize um continuing on i penned obituaries and breaking news before but never have judgment calls over language felt so tricky there's a jarring chasm between warm souvenirs of a man i owe a great deal of early career work and aesthetic dance floor outings to and the starkness of the timeline there they may be still disquieting developments to follow reporting in the midst of a posthumous reckoning with an artist's reputation is a collision of competing perspectives and no one is infallible when trying to land the neatest version of history not least ra i don't think many of us in music had chance to, to satisfactorily navigate the complicated feelings about revel's legacy we just suppressed them no you didn't suppress them you guys negatively affected his career you took food out of his mouth B b maybe affected his relationship with his family friends and everything and probably in some ways contributed to his death unfortunately you know that's a everyone has to play well everyone has to play a part in it. it's like when that lady from fucking love island you know unfortunately unalived herself everyone on social media pretending like you know what the stuff that they said about that presenter didn't didn't kind of you know um lead to her maybe doing that it was you know was also being incorrect as well it's like no you played a part too you have to you have to own up to it. It is what it is. It, it ended obviously really sad, but you have to kind of be honest and have some level of awareness and responsibility of the part you played. Um, it continues in hindsight. There was some uneasy foreshadowing when I interviewed Ravel for the art of DJing in 2018. He mentioned substance, hardships, anxiety, and compulsive behaviors over a dozen times, and that's just what made it to publication. That interview, which took place only months before Ravel's career unraveled, reveals self awareness that he was dancing dangerously close to the edge. The quote, it, it, it's, one, it's one of my real regrets that this portrayal of me as a party boy is maybe leading the impressionable young music heads to see and replicate that mentality as a benchmark of cool. Jack Master is expected to be a guy who is the life and soul, cracking jokes, good time personified. But there's a difference between Jack Master and Jack Rivel. I can't turn it on all the time. That can be very draining because a long party really takes it out of you at best of times. I've seen quite a lot of DJs fall by the wayside. To say that they're, yeah, exactly. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the pressure of that? Imagine you want to be on your best behavior. You go to a rave and then somebody's complete, somebody's offering you drugs, free drinks, this and that, you know? Like just because you got this persona of being this party boy. So it must have its positive, but the negative still maybe sometimes outweigh it. It continues. To say that there any substance industry conversation, to say that any substantive industry conversation about Jack Massa over the past six years didn't at least partially touch on drugs and the events of 2018 is dishonest. For all his peaks 
the 2010 scenes was stunned when it came to talking about excesses and self-care his endurance was legion and a key part to his exhibitionist flair and i don't think anyone fully weighed up the ramifications of a larger than life persona which took him to the top and there is a lack of responsive and account lack of accountability lack, lack of kind of adult responsibility about that isn't it you kind of lord somebody for their party boy antics for their larger than life persona for their rock star lifestyle then you get shocked at the things that they get up to it's like this is some rock star shit sometimes it goes well sometimes it goes very very badly um this is kind of what it is so for people to kind of become puritanical and to get their fucking knickers in a twist and start clutching their pearls when they hear some you know some pretty dicey shit about the guy and what he may have done in his private life or behind the scenes i don't know it feels a bit disingenuous it honestly does but like i said previously i just think he was unlucky the timing of what he did when he did it the scene changing you know unfortunately it ended the way it ended we live and work and consume culture in a radically different way in 13 years to 15 years ago the shifting standards of how to talk about accountability and atonement are doubly complex when it's there's a personal element at play questions over how river could have more compassionately supported first while he was burning the candle at both ends and then in recent years on relative detachment will gnaw away a lot of people from the long time there's no easy way to make peace with a tragic arc but i believe there is a wrong one that would be to brush it under the carpet there would be a disservice to everyone including river and his loved ones those who look back on river's time fondly can feel guilty conflicted or even devastated about his death without skirting the material details um, while striving to lord him i just think we need to live in a world where people can atone bro he atoned immediately apologized asked for forgiveness offered to hand this off to the police got sober disappeared for a year what more can someone do he did everything that needs to be done he spoke about it candidly on camera in print like god damn like the way they excommunicated him was if he was right if he ran away from the situation that refused to apologize continued that pattern of behavior cool but the guy tried he tried he tried to make things right and it wasn't enough it was almost like a one strike and you're out which is fine i don't mind but let's apply it across the board. It's not the same across the board. Some people get two strikes. Some people get seven. Some people get unlimited strikes and they're still around. Like, come on, man. He was a real person whose appetite for living took him to soaring heights and dark lows. The breadth of, the breadth of his influence goes beyond his capacity to throw as a DJ. You can measure it at how concrete um, indefiable age in a modern clubbing flows through him. Jack must have personified an era and partially in response to his actions, progressive dance culture made strides to move past that era. Reading tributes over the past couple of days, there's a profound sense of loss that that era to a large extent now rests with him. Beyond grieving the friend and the scene figurehead, the sadness is magnified by the fact that at multiple points, events might have been preventable. Life is complicated, but you have to live with yourself at the end of the day. Reveal work towards that and recognition. We should talk about him honestly. If you want honesty, if you want my honesty, here it is. I'm gutted by all of this, that this story took this path and that any of us have to write these tributes at all cuts to an extremely deep level. No, I agree. He's right. Um, but I think in general, the really sad thing about this is that we've all kind of learned a lesson, I think, collective as a scene. And I think, you know, the Seth Trucks or Jamie Jones era, it doesn't exist anymore. Those type of DJs don't exist. That type of lifestyle isn't really lionized or popularized or encouraged, really. And I think it's a good thing. I think we've all kind of collectively kind of moved away from it. People kind of do that sort of stuff behind the scenes still, but no one is encouraging guys to be like sex hounds and sex pests and party monsters to that kind of level. Um, you know, you're kind of maybe allowed to get away with it a little bit more in the LGBTQ kind of gay scene because, you know, they're a little bit more of a hedonistic kind of scene in general. But I think in the hetero kind of dance music world, that sort of stuff isn't really seen as a good thing anymore, which is a good thing. Because I think there's a lot more women and other people involved who kind of need to be looked after and maybe treated a little bit more differently than the lads would. Um, that's a good thing and obviously when it comes to jack master's legacy probably the only way he was going to be remembered positively was if he passed anyway because there was no path of redemption it seemed like but now that he's not around anymore people are realizing and remembering oh shit just how important he was for the scene how great of a dj he was and maybe in his passing people will now um you know understand you know the importance of rehabilitation the importance of reintegrating people back into society especially especially 
especially if they showed real remorse if they're trying to do good i think that's the best way to go about things and again this could be different if i'm speaking out my ass because maybe people know things in the industry maybe he was doing more than what was being reported who fucking knows but from what we've been able to know on paper and from what we see on media it didn't seem like he had a pattern of this type of behavior with girls it seemed like that particular event was the one that was a bit crazy he made his apologies he tried to do you know the right thing it didn't work out and he basically paid the price ever since then it's been a long slow death in a weird way um his career has never really fully recovered from that point which is a real shame because you know he was a fucking legendary dj that's what people are remembering by but it has been nice to see i'm not gonna lie it's been fucking great to see all the tributes of him online people just posting set after set after set after set mix after mix blend after blend has been fucking brilliant to see so at least people are remembering positively in that way so big up Big up, 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 Jack Master. Um, before we end here, let me quickly read some messages here before I go. Um, big up, let me scroll up here, see what I've seen. Um, big up, uh, Ruby. We are all flawed and have done shit, so it's all ironic to see people act high and mighty, exactly. Um, like if you've done bad shit, talk about accountability, take accountability, change your behavior. That's the best you can do, exactly. Big up, Eduardo Madeira. Big up, Netwatcher um haven't heard of oh yeah true asqueef i spoke about him on my thing in it yeah big up asqueef or not big up asqueef asqueef has disappeared and also the founder of um crossbreed the kink party that i spoke about too i haven't yet oh asqueef had a popping 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 social media didn't he instagram profile was it i think it's jimmy asqueef right what happened to his social media or his instagram because he was quite i think he remember he was quite popular on instagram because he was posting all the memes he was doing that thing to get famous where he would he turned his DJ profile account on social into just a meme account. Yeah, he's still private. So he doesn't post on there anymore. I wonder what he's doing now. Is he just like working a regular job? He doesn't DJ anymore, does he? I don't think I've done, I don't think I've seen Asquith DJ in ages. Let's see if he's got any sets available on his RA. I think he might have just quit. Maybe he just quit. Yeah, so fuck. There are people who haven't come back. Yeah, no, no events. It's just he's passed let's see past events where's the last time he's played that's been documented on our or maybe he's playing under a, d a different name or something that could be a thing yeah the last time he played was in 2002 and that event was cancelled because i think that's probably around the time when he got you know he got exposed as being a being a little bit of a of a bad dude jesus christos yeah okay cool there are people who haven't come back at all um let's continue here he seems like a real consistent chap big up net watch you can see the pain even in the origins doc exactly yeah I, I agree man even the way some parts were filmed kind of lacked boundaries respectfully oversharing and such the flirtatious flagrant expressions the sesh life all escapism it's freddie mercury and such i think the way things were handled was horrific it was bad timing for him they came for him i watched nearly every interview of him and he always seemed like something was, yeah yeah something was off yeah i, I agree like he, he 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 never seemed very present interviews he always seemed like he was somewhere else but he also seemed very troubled like he gave me a lot of vibes of like if you remember the iconic seth Troxler interviews from back in the day jamie jones those guys were always off their nut but they were always kind of like you could say there was a lot of pain there and i think if seth Troxler talks about you know he was engaged um just one of you know love of his life type of thing and that didn't really work out because of his touring life so you know it took it out of them they got a lot from it became really successful really rich and stuff famous but personally they had to deal with a lot do you know what i mean you're, you're kind of imagine people in your life are passing away you can't go to funerals because you're on tour you can't hang out with your partner because you're on tour you know you have a really unhealthy relationship with booze and drugs and shit it can be really hard so you know he was you know the last of the mohicans when it comes to that um jack master but again losing your mum at that age i think he lost his mum when he was like six or something right and i think his dad i think he lost his dad maybe uh some years after that origins videos were filmed so both parents gone like oof, tough tough to deal with man tough to deal with um yeah bit quite yeah but I'm, I'm i love such trucks as well i'm a big fan and such that's the only one who's actually um changed his life around completely and gone the complete opposite way and really gone like to be a normal family man and chilled out and shit so big up such trucks for doing that but it's probably a lot harder said than being done in it so big up such trucks r.i.p jackmaster and all those things in between 